Excited to be here this morning. Was uh, happy when, when my father-in-law Tom asked me to help him out with this, and, and um, even more so when he said, "I'll help you out." So um, I'm here to talk about cornhole boards. Anybody ever heard of cornhole at all? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So uh, cornhole. I first got into the sport of cornhole when um, I started going to football games regularly without adult supervision. <laughs> so um, there's a whole history of how cornhole came about and like a lot of history there's several versions of it so no one really knows exactly what the truth is so I guess it's more of a legend. Anything from Native Americans throwing rocks in a hole to Germans throwing rocks in a hole to you know I guess this guy Mick Gillicuti throwing rocks in a hole. Yep up in Illinois, down in Kentucky, pick a place, throw a dart at it, and that's where cornhole was invented pretty much, right? Um, but the main thing about cornhole, obviously, you've got two boards on either side, and I believe they're about 33 feet apart from hole to hole, okay? Uh, you can get as technical as you want. There's a American Cornhole Association, and they regulate everything. I mean, again, you can get down to the nitty gritty, of how a cord is designed, of what the cornhole bags are made of, and all that stuff. But really, when you just want to drink a few beers for a football game, nobody cares too much about all that. So, um, but there's the outline of the court, and we'll get into that a little bit more. I kind of want to get past the actual history and, and the, the rules and all that stuff fairly quickly so we can get into how it was constructed. So if you have questions, please raise your hand, stop me. I could talk all day. Um, so essentially you have two boards, like I said, from hole to hole is 33 feet apart, okay? And the players, you can have singles matches where it's just one person against another person or doubles, two people team against another two person team. Um, if you're playing, we'll go, most of the time I see is four people playing together, so two teams of two. And essentially team A, one player, one player will be on this side, the other player will be on that side, same thing for team B, okay? And you basically just chuck the bags back and forth. The boards are two feet by four feet. They're supposed to be no more than four inches uh, at the bottom from the ground and 12 inches at the top from the ground. And that gives you your slope, okay? The hole itself is six inch diameter centered off of the, it's, uh, the center of the hole is nine inches from the top lip of the board itself. Okay, so that just positions that hole. It's supposed to be sanded and finished smooth. Um, no blemishes or anything that's gonna keep those bags from sliding or stopping. Um, I kind of ran into a little bit of a problem with mine that I, that I made down there uh, and finished. I put too much polyurethane on there and they, uh, the bags kind of slowly slide down, <laughs> which gets really frustrating. So. Uh, until those get really, really worn in, I've only played maybe three dozen games on them. I haven't played them very much. But once they get more worn in, that finish will dinge down a little bit. It'll be a little bit better. Um, like I said, there are lots of rules. Um, really, the main thing you want to talk about when you're talking about play are how far the boards are and faults, like when you make a mistake or when, quote unquote, a foul, right? And the foul line is essentially the front of the board. So when you're pitching, you can take a step, but your foot cannot come in front of this board. Otherwise, it's a foul, and whatever bag was tossed is removed from the board, and points are not scored, okay? On points, because you're playing, the one, because I'm normally playing at like tailgate parties, typically, Everybody has a drink in their hand, right? 
And that is strictly for balance purposes, okay? <laughs> Stri strictly for balance. So as this gets lighter, you have to get another one, otherwise your balance gets thrown off more, right? So, but in that environment, usually there's a lot of trash talking. You know, oh, you can't make that, no way, no way you're gonna do that. But traditionally with cornhole, it's a very respectful sport. And that, that leads me to believe that it was admitted by the British, okay? Yeah. It's like, oh, jolly good, you know? But, um, you know, we're always get razzing each other, giving everybody a hard time, but if you're in a tournament, apparently that is extremely bad form. You're supposed to be quiet. Oh, congratulations on your wonderful shot, you know? Singles and doubles we talked about. <laughs> Innings is just a round of all four of all, uh, every person on the team playing. That's considered an inning. Uh, let's see. All right, so here's the point system. It's really simple. If a bag lands on the deck, right? That's one point. If another bag goes in the hole, that's three points. Three points, one point, I have four points, okay? That's, that's all there is to it. With, it's real simple math, again, because you've got to keep your weight right. Could you go over that again? <laughs> <laughs> Just for you, Buzz. <laughs> one point on the deck, three points in the hole, okay? And you've got four bags per round, per team. So. Uh, essentially, if you get, you know, if you get buzz, this is I'm challenging you with this one. If I get four bags in the hole, how many points do I have? Uh, about twelve. There you go. Yeah. Give buzz a round of applause. All right, buzz. Very good. Very good. Okay, so that's essentially what it is, and the um, the points offset. Okay, um, Tom had mentioned it was similar to shuffleboard, so I'm assuming that's how shuffleboard is scored as well. Uh, if I get eight points for my team and the other team gets six points, then essentially at the end of the inning, my team goes up two points. It offsets, okay? You play to 21. Yes, sir? As in shuffleboard, can you uh, knock a bag off the deck? Yes, and it's encouraged. Yeah, so if, if I'm throwing and, and there's one kind of hanging here, there are some guys really good. They'll just come up, knock that one off, and then this one will slide right in. It's really impressive. Um, just and but also, if you got one kind of hanging there, and I throw a bad shot, if I knock it in, and mine sticks, then they get three points, and then I've got my one. Okay. Yes, sir. Is, is it the first one that gets twenty-one, or do you, you discount them until you get up? If somebody gets to twenty-one. It's the first. Uh, well, they offset, but once every after every inning, when that someone gets to twenty-one with the offset points, then that's the end of the game. Did I answer your question? Now you have lots of um, house rules, quote unquote, uh, where you know some say you have to win by two points, and some say you know if you go over 21 points, then that's considered a bust, and you go back down to 11. You know those games can go on forever, but official cornhole rules say first one to 21 doesn't matter if you go over, that's the end of the game. Yep. Well, and uh, one of the official rules, it's funny I learned in doing the presentation and. and doing research with Tom, actually Tom doing the research and saying, here's your research. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> um, I learned that once you start a game with one hand, you have to play the entire game with that hand, so you can't switch hit. So, and whatever side you stand on, you can't move over to the other side of the board either. So it, it gets pretty, uh, pretty stringent there. All right, uh, delivery of the cornhole bags. Again, this is just, this is just really fine detailed rules. There's something saying that you can't spend more than 20 seconds before the last one, or if you can't be more than 20 seconds before you throw your next bag. I guess that's stalling or something like that. Um, the rotation is pretty much, uh, if, if I would go, I'd throw one bag and then the other team would throw one bag. I'd throw one bag, the other team would throw one bag. So uh, you're, you're working to kind of maneuver the, the location on there. Uh, fouls, we talked about fouls, play of the game, protests. So uh, this is getting, I was impressed. I had no idea it got this, this uh, detailed. Will there be a test later? There is, just for you. Just for you. Um, and see right here where it says more? There, these are more rules that we decided not to put on the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're available to anybody that wants them. Of course, you can go on the website and they're all there. <clears throat> scoring, we talked about the offset scoring. 
calculation we talked about calculating more rules cut co more rules covered um, in the full version right okay how the boards were built the crow way I am a hobbyist I've built a couple sticks of furniture in my house it's all done with a Craig jig because that's that's how I roll with a Craig jig um, I tell anybody who's looking to get into woodworking that that's the best hundred dollars they could spend to get their dip their toe in the water and, and have some fun there it's, it's easy um, it's effective and it's fairly cheap once you get going so uh, if you see something awesome and say oh that's a neat way that you did that I got a neat way too I would love to hear about that after the presentation okay so again here's the uh, here's the the design and the the goal here was to make them uh, competition ready if, if I wanted to go join a competition these board these boards would pass yeah, yeah. ACA standards the ACA standard boards right so again it's two foot by four foot the hole itself is uh, nine inches and that nine inches should actually go right to the middle right to the middle of that circle um, it's a six inch diameter hole and it's centered on the boards the uh, the deck itself is made of half inch birch plywood uh, that's the preferred the preferred board for this it's, it's semi hard hard it's a hardwood ply right so it's going to withstand the elements because when you have so many balancing liquids a lot of times these boards get left out to the elements yeah. the night before um, but it stands up to those a little bit better the frame um, I used uh, the select pine at, Ho at Home Depot for my frame one by threes I think for this we used maple, right? We used the maple for this. Um, the legs themselves are made of the same. And this is, this is kind of, I, I enjoyed, well, I'll get to that in a second. I, I'll get to that in a second. Um, it's just a simple frame. Again, Craig jigged on all the joints. And there's a cross member. Uh, it's more towards the center on these, probably right about there. And that just keeps the board from flexing. I mean, you're not going to be landing in the air. Simple frame. Uh, cross member here and again you're not landing any 747s you're just throwing bean bags at it so I don't think it's gonna have too much weight but I'm glad we put this here because I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old that think it's a like a ramp that they just run and jump off of all the time um, so real real simple I left the uh, for pure aesthetics um, I had the the frame inset a half inch all the way around okay a lot of homemade corn, corn bubble cornhole boards that I see uh, the frame is butted up flush against the side um, again that's just an aesthetic thing that I do uh, to keep it in it's it's a difference between a cantilever deck and a, a deck where the board the posts come right off the edge it's just my preference um, again I, I used a lot of, of uh, pocket holes in here pocket holes according to the regs it does have to be but for every time I've ever made some I've gotten four right out of a single sheet of plywood because it, it is just a, just a hair longer than the, than the eight foot. So we were able to get four boards out of, out of it, no problem. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not really an issue. Now the, uh, the legs, I cut the legs out right here. Um, I couldn't tell you the angle, you know, unless I've sat down and stared at it for too long. But uh, the legs are cut 15 inches on one side and 13 inches on another side. So do your super awesome math and you can have that slope if you want for the angle. But that's how I did that. We rounded the, uh, I'm not sure if you can see, right. if y'all can see right here, we just basically rounded the top end of these legs so that it could make the turn when you open and close it, okay? It's real important that you have that rounded enough so that when you get here, it doesn't act like a lever and push your, your deck off of the frame itself because we, we ran into that while we were building these. We had to go back and sand them down a little bit more. Um, now, I've done something that I haven't seen on any other cornhole board. Uh, I thought it was a neat idea. Um, I cut the hole out with a router, okay, and I've got my jig over here, and I'll show you that in a second. But I cut it out with a router, and I kept the dot. I call this the dot. And then the cross member for the legs goes right, it bisects that hole right there. And I just screwed the dot right to it. Okay, so when you close the board up, it truly is closed. Okay, 
It, um, it looks cool in my opinion. I, I made a set of these and raffled them off at work uh, to the staff of Belize. We raised, we raised about $300 just for the boards and it was just a simple stain. And then I stained this a darker and then I stained this natural and the legs were natural. So it just kind of had that pop, you know, um, looked really, really neat. So anyway, so this of course is a very, it's natural. This isn't complete. This is just the guts of it, right? Or the skeleton rather. Uh, you can paint these, the, a, the ACA, the ACA uh, says essentially it's got to be a smooth surface um, finished with some sort of polyurethane. Um, Semi-gloss is preferred because it gives you just enough slide but not too slick that the boards slide down. Again, that's a problem that I ran into. I got a little overzealous with my, with my uh, poly and uh, they, they do slide down on mine. But like I said, once the bags get a little bit of moisture to them, they stick pretty well. Um, people can, you can buy wraps. Uh, it's very common to have sports themed um, boards like mine are Atlanta United. If anybody's Atlanta United fans. Um, yep. This is some pictures of just the, before we put everything together. Um, let's see. Let me see. Again, this is our four decks. It's just stacked on top of each other. It's just a piece of plywood cut up into four sections. Everything was cut out of maple as far as the frames go. That guy looks handsome. Uh, drilled a whole bunch of pocket holes like we talked about. Uh, first thing we did was we put the, uh, the frame together. We put the rectangular frame together. Um, then we cut the decks out, flipped them over, and then attached the rectangular frame to the bottom of the deck. Okay? That allowed us to uh, have a raised surface for our router to cut the hole out. So uh, the biggest challenge for me um, when I was building my first set, building this set, oh, thank you, Tom, for attaching this, was to create a circle jig. We had a, a store-bought circle jig, but it was too small. Um, it was too small uh, to get the hole that we wanted. So I created this one. It's a simple board. Um, I took a little a stud. You could use a screw, whatever you want. Drilled a hole in it, put it here, and it's three, three inches to the router bit that's in the middle. And then I drilled a hole in the middle of the board, stuck that stud in there, and then just pivoted around that to get my six inch circle, okay? Um, that was one of those moments where I'm like, yes, it worked. <laughs> Something from my brain worked. Um, so this is, this is exactly what we used. It worked out pretty well. Um, yep, real happy with how that happened. It was, you call that a circle jig? A circle jig, yep. I just screwed it. <laughs> yeah. um, I just screwed two screws. Um, directly from on top of the router and the uh, the router has threads in it and I didn't want to mess them up so I just found some thinner screws that would go through and just not mess up the, the actual router itself but anyway happy how that worked out and it was funny the first time I did it um, you're basically you're just digging a channel right a big circle channel I had to make three or four passes the first thing I didn't expect was my router cord was getting all cork screwed up while I'm doing it and the second thing I didn't expect was the the sawdust had nowhere to go. It just kind of sat in that channel. And uh, it didn't happen this time, but when I was making those, my second pass, those, uh, the sawdust started to, to burn and just, you know, smolder in there, which I thought was, you know, I was like, oh, I'll just let it do its thing. Maybe it'll cut the hole for me. So that's, uh, okay, so here what I'm doing is I'm using a round over bit and uh, I'm rounding over all of the, the the pieces of the framing, because that's where you're gonna be grabbing it. You don't want it to be too sharp on your hands when you're picking it up and moving it. Um, the other thing is, once we got done building the whole thing, um, I took this router with another round over bit and just went all around the edges of the deck itself, inside the hole. Um, and you can come back with a, with a hand sander orbital, these little sanding block. And just, again, make sure nothing's gonna hold up those bags from either falling off the side or going into the hole, right? Another handsome guy there for you. Peter, does the ACA have anything to say about any type of finish around the hole? It just has to be consistent with the rest of the board. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, you, it's, you, you have some pretty tricked out cornhole boards out there. Um, some people put sensors under the deck itself. So when the bag falls in, you know, it makes like a noise like, you're awesome, or <laughs> score, you know. Um, they have lights, LED lights kits that you can put under here as well. Um, so that you can play cornhole at night if you want, all kinds of different colors. Um, that will not work with this, this setup because the, the cross member comes up flush and so you wouldn't be able to put it, you'd have to put that cross member lower down on the legs. Cross member, and that's just instructions on how to, uh, to put the cross member down. I get kind of ahead of myself a lot of times if you can't tell. Um, okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to bring up one of them that I finished so that you can, I can talk a little bit about that finish because these are a little bit different. Um, I was really excited. Again, I, I, when I made them, I wanted to do something a little bit different because of course if you want to have something, you want to have it stand out from everything else that's, that's out there, right? So, put this here. All right, I've, I've painted mine in an Atlanta United theme red, black, and gold. It's the only red and black that I have in my house. I'm a huge tech fan, a huge okay. tech fan. Um, so I was, ex I was excited when Atlanta United included that gold in their, in their theme, which oddly enough unites, right, Georgia and Georgia Tech. Yes, Buzz? What is that? I'm seeing a circle. You're seeing a circle here, yep. So I had purchased a decal, an Atlanta United decal. It looks exactly like what's on my chest here. That was by design. Um, and they got left out. It, they got left outside under a deck. They were wrapped up and everything, but the humidity kind of peeled that sticker up. I thought I had put, that was my main concern, quite frankly. I put a bunch of polyurethane on there to try to keep that from happening, but it happened anyway. So um, my plan now is to, to sand it down lightly and do one more coat of poly just to kind of get rid of that circle. But there was a sticker here. That's what that is. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? Um, so anyway, uh, I stained the whole thing. It's a Carrington stain. I used water-based stain, so I, so I would use a water-based poly. The reason for that being, um, if you use an oil-based poly, uh, it'll, it'll yellow over time because of the petroleum in there. Whereas if you use a water-based poly, it'll uh, keep your colors bright. Um, so that's why I did that. I prefer using oil-based poly. I think it works better, but the water worked really, really well also. Okay, something else you might notice that's different is um, I have, can y'all see these right here? Hinges. The hinges, these pull-off hinges or, or uh, breakaway hinges. I'm not sure, whatever you want to call them. I got the same things on there. And essentially, the boards, they snap together, okay? I just put them right here. And then when I close, so you close the legs up, you hinge the boards together, and then it becomes a very, I mean, they're connected. I've got butterfly latches on this side. Some people call them, some people call them butterfly latches or table latches, essentially, um, on your dining room table, what keeps the leaves in, you know? So it creates a single unit for the boards themselves, and the bags are stored inside. So it's, it's a one big thing for me. Um, they can be kind of heavy with all the bags in there, but compared to the other, I believe someone said, they look like boards made by a woodworker, not a picnicker. Um, <laughs> all the other cornhole boards that I see at tailgates are made out of two by fours and three quarter inch plywood, and those suckers are heavy. They are heavy. And these are not that, I mean, these aren't that bad. I've also cut out uh, hand holes in here, and this is just aesthetics that I did that we didn't, we didn't do with those right now. Do you actually carry it with a hand hole? I do, yeah. I sure do, because when they're put together, I mean, it's you got a good old grip on it. It's it's pretty good. Um, I have a, I bought a cornhole bag as well, um, a carrying case, and I wrap I wrap the setup in uh, a furniture moving blanket, and I uh, I wrap it up in that, and I put it in the carrying case. It goes on my shoulder, and uh, it's not too bad to carry around that way. Let me show you the bag. It just looks like this. It's got two shoulder straps, just like this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, it's got a padded shoulder pad right here. Just throw the shoulder thing right there and you're good to go. Looks like a big purse. The boards fit in here. Yeah, the whole, the whole boards fit in here. Yep, together. So uh, we found the hinges 
on Amazon. Um, it took me quite a while to find them. I was, I was concerned about finding a set of hinges that would hold up um, because it is a good bit of weight. Uh, but you can find pull-off hinges. If you go on Amazon, you can find, just type in pull-off hinges. There's a plethora of options. There are some that are this design. There are some that are more just kind of a latch design. Um, these were silver, just straight galvanized uh, stainless steel. And I spray painted them black to make them match. Um, but anything very, very easy. The other side. The other side, these are uh, called table latches. Is what I had the most luck finding the most of them. Um, they're also called butterfly latches. Yeah. They just spin when you turn them, lock down. If you ever look at the underside of your table, if you have a leaved dining room table, it's the exact same thing. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Uh, let's see, clicker. So these are some, some sources that we used. Again, the, uh, the cornhole bags that I, that I got, these guys right here, Atlanta United decal bags. Um, I got those from uh, Victory Tailgate. They have an assortment of every sport, college, professional, any team you want, you could probably find a, a cornhole decal for them. Um, same thing with the actual decal but I got the ones that came that were originally on here I got them at customcornhole.com um, pretty simple there and you can see it was a big I think it's a 12 if anybody can see the where they were just from the difference in the finish it's a 12 inch diameter and they got them for all yeah right here yep they got them for everybody and again of course Amazon I mean if they don't sell on Amazon Prime, I don't need it. <laughs> uh, challenges when we were making these, again, uh, the, just figuring out the circle hole jig, that was a lot of fun and challenging for me just to get that worked out. I'm glad I got that figured out. Um, painting, the design that I actually put on here, uh, I had never done any sort of detailed painting like this before, so that was a challenge. Um, I really, really enjoyed it though. I was happy how it came out. There's a couple of blemishes, but that's just called character, right? And then um, working the round over for the legs so they wouldn't pry the deck up. That was something that we found out along the way. And again, uh, I put too many coats of polyurethane on here. I got a little overzealous, so my bags kind of slide down. But once I, uh, again, once it just kind of naturally wears, that'll fix itself or I'll just sand it and maybe put a different finish on there. Tools we used, a chop saw, table saw, drum sander, drill press, orbital sander, the router with the circle jig, a uh, ton of different bits, measuring devices indeed, clamps, what's PPE? Personal protection equipment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do we use that for? I don't yeah. <laughs> you, left, you missed the crank. And the Craig jig, we forgot to put, yeah, Craig jig was used for everything on there as well. And of course, what shops complete without your, your, your team, <coughs> they were, whew, they, they enjoyed every minute. This is my son, Logan. He'll be six on New Year's, and this is Wyatt. He'll be three at the end of August. So they were all over the place. We said, I made the mistake. I said, we had the cleanest shop in town. And then Tom quickly corrected me. No, we had the most cleaned shop in town, but it was not the cleanest. So they, they really enjoy getting out there with us. Now this is how Tom plays cornhole. In case you can't see the scale, this is the scale. You can play this in your living room from your lazy boy, and the bags are about this big. So you don't have to worry about overextending yourself, if you will. And if you have one too many balancing liquids, hey, you're sitting down, so you're good to go. You've got to use small containers for the balancing liquid. Yeah, they're small <laughs> containers, exactly. Yeah, little he ounces. even uses a remote control called Wyatt. Yeah, exactly. Wyatt, get that for me. <laughs> Here's, again, just the sources that we used. And are there any questions, anything I didn't go over? I just have one more quick comment. I, I had the absolute opposite problem. When I made mine, it stuck too much. You, you throw it out there, it just goes 
They just slap right to it. Yeah. Waffle on a plate, man. I hear you. Well, they have. Uh, what I go did ahead. is uh, took some steel wool and uh, went uh, I think it was a single out steel wool and made it perfect. So you might want to take your polyurethane just hit it with like four out steel wool. Okay. It might just fix it. Okay. I'll and have you to do that. Really see it. It just yep. it just a little bit. I hear you. So do you have a slick side and a rough side on these bags? That's what I was going to say. So they have, uh, just like anything else, you can get, we can pass some bags around if y'all want to see. Yeah. This is Chicago Bears one for anybody who likes the Bears. What are they filled with? So you can have uh, the, you can have them full of corn. Essentially, traditionally they're full of corn. Um, the problem with corn is it's a natural material. If it gets wet, they swell. The bags become really, really tight. Um, and also, they break down over time. I played cornhole uh, with corn bags that were very old, and you'd throw them on there, and it would just throw up a whole bunch of corn dust after a while. <laughs> I mean, so, uh, but traditionally, full of corn. I believe the uh, the ACA, the ACA, um, allows for a synthetic bead in there as well, the same size as corn kernels and all that stuff. So, um, I like the synthetic over the corn just because it lasts longer and doesn't swell up. Now, about the uh, slick slick bags and all that stuff, um, professional corn holders, right, they'll have one side of the bag that's more of a synthetic, so it slides really well, and the other side is more like a, uh, more like a felt, right? Um, so when that side hit, it slides and then stops. And I've seen... I was playing cornhole at a, at a, a game the other day, uh, about a month ago, and this guy knew what he was doing. He brought his own, his own bags and his own set, and his M.O., what he would do every time, his first bag would stop right in front of the hole so that it would be hard for me to get something in without knocking his in there, right? So he would use the soft side that would just stop it right there. And then he would take the, the rest of his bags and flip them over to the slick side, and he'd come around the top, and then we'd, they would just leak in the top side. It was like clockwork. This guy just destroyed me. It was so it wasn't even funny, um, but it was it was it was really fun to watch him really know what he was doing with the cornhole set. Yes, sir. I didn't hear, but uh, is there any specifications on the weight of the of bags? There is, yeah. I didn't, I didn't say because I'm not exactly sure what the weight is. It might have been in the presentation. I'm well, kinda... depending on what material you use for a filler, it's, it's going to. It's going to change the weight exactly. But there is, there's a uh, this, this specific weight for the bags. Again, I'm not exactly sure what that weight is. But all that stuff is regulated. I mean, they regulate even down to what a, a bad throw is. You know, if you kind of like a, a pitcher's balk. You know, if you think about that, they'll have a. Well, you just balked. You came over and oh, it's a bad throw, or you did that on purpose, or I don't know. Again, it gets really technical once you get up to higher, higher skilled players, I guess. But again, I just have to have the right amount of balancing liquid, and then I'm good to go. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? What was your process for painting? So what I did, um, I stained the whole thing first, right, um, and then I basically just took painter's tape. And, and taped it off, made my lines, figured out, uh, you know, measured how thick I wanted these stripes. And there's five stripes on these boards because it's the Atlanta United Five Stripes. That's what they're named, known as. Um, I just taped it off. First, I believe, first I did the red, and then I did the black, right? Because I figured you'd be able to see the black through the red if I were to do it the other way. Uh, and that was the easy part. I just taped it off from corner to corner. I liked having it kind of go towards the hole, give you a visual sight. Uh, but I felt like it needed something else. So then I went to work on my yellow line. Um, that was challenging. It was just a lot of really patient taping, making sure I had the right uh, uh, you know, distance from, what, from the, other, the other colors. But the circle up here, now this, this was very challenging. Um, my wife is a teacher, and, and she has, it's called a cricket. It, it, it's, it looks like a um, CNC router, you know, similar to a CNC router, except it cuts paper. Um, and she had some uh, latex, it was latex 
adhesive paper so you can make stickers and I just had her cut out the circle for me and then I very carefully laid this one on right there and then and then I laid the other one on top and it, it was that was very difficult for me but once I figured out oh she can just cut a latex sticker for me at any size any shape I wanted then that helped make this um, it, without that I have no idea how I could have done that where that where I would have had clean line so um, the first one took a lot longer. I probably spent two weeks just because I was literally figuring it out. I didn't have any plans. I just went by the dimensions that were on the website. Um, and then I, remembering what I had seen and kind of figured this out. And so with anything, I'm sure, you know, as you, as you start on a project, it gets a little bit bigger than you thought it would be in, at first. Um, and also, as long as it took me to build this, to actually build it, finishing it, took me easily twice the time because I got so in depth with my paint scheme and things like that. Um, I could have just stained it and been done with it. But the good thing about it is you get a, a one sheet of plywood, you got four set or four boards, two complete sets. Um, so you kind of get an assembly line going. You know, you just go ahead and get all your frames cut and, and pocket hold and you build all those and just kind of goes. Uh, that's what we found when we were building uh, the four sets for this. And here's the other cool thing about it. Not a lot in materials. You know, it doesn't cost that much to make these. Um, you can make two sets. Tom, what was this? I mean, $110 to make two sets, you know, plus or minus a little bit here or there. I looked on the way over here. Victory Tailgate had a complete set with bags and everything. Uh, $250 for two boards and I just made four boards for $110. Um, I've had several people want me to make them for them. It's, it's, this is a, and I'm not tooting my own horn, but just looking at what's at normal tailgates and someone, again, I forget who said it, someone said it when they got here. That looks like a cornhole set made by a woodworker, not by a picnicker. These are better than, than what's out there. They're lighter. They're easy to maneuver, and they look nicer, in my opinion. So, um, and it doesn't take that. It doesn't take a. Uh, if you know what you're doing and know your way around a wood shop, you can make these pretty simply. And uh, I've got a lot of good compliments on them. The board that we raffled off again was just a stain, so I didn't have any sort of paint or decal on there. And quite frankly, I don't know if you could sell a decaled cornhole set, you know, with like a, a copyright image on there. I don't know that you could sell that. <coughs> Well, I want to thank you guys for letting me show up and show you a thing or two. It's a really fun project. I enjoyed it. Um, and it's, again, this is something that yeah, it's, it's great for any event, you know, whether you have a backyard barbecue, going to a tailgate, whether you've got toddlers or, you know, whatever season of life you're in, this is a fun game to play. <laughs> And, and we can What's that? Or just balancing liquids. Or just balancing liquids, exactly. Yep.